You hear this ceremony, martial arts, then these words have gained worldwide recognition. But what is the reason behind the widespread popularity of Japanese cultural practices? In fact, they all share something in common. Greetings, everyone. I have been delivering lectures on the practical application of quantum mechanics in everyday life, addressing audiences ranging from children in private tutoring schools to the general public, executives, professional athletes, university sports clubs, and professionals from various fields. The content of my talks has been resonated with the Buddhist community as well. During a recent event, I had the privilege of speaking in front of 260 Buddhist monks and priests. Initially, I felt nervous and overwhelmed by the magnitude of the occasion. However, as I focused on conveying the essence of Japanese spirit to the audience, which I'm going to tell you today, my intention is allowing me to deliver my speech. I felt a strong connection and resonated with the audience. However hard of the Japanese spirit, I would like to share the reasons why I hold the Japanese spirit in such high regards. I have been practicing karate since the age of eight and have been a member of karate clubs in high school and university. The Japanese spirit I'm sharing with you today is not merely theoretical knowledge. It is something I have experienced through my physical sensation and feeling that transcends the body. In my presentation for upper, I aim to convey the notion through my journey in karate that consciousness precedes our physical bodies. This awareness has greatly influenced my personal life and professional success, including my work at the private tutoring school and my seminars on personal growth for adults. Have ever come across a scene like in this photo taken in Japan? The rock wrapped with a rope is actually treated as an sacred object. This is just one example. Similar displays can be witnessed at the Shinto shrines on a daily basis. Some people claim that Japanese people are atheists. We celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ at Christmas, visit Buddhist temples for prayers on New Year's Eve, and go to Shinto shrines on New Year's Day. In just eight days, we embrace three different religions. Even those who consider themselves atheists offer prayers with palms placed together to rocks and trees. Some even connect with the consciousness of the trees. For generations, the Japanese have believed in the divine spirit residing in rocks and trees and other elements. Here are some of the Japanese values. God dwells in all things. The heavenly deities are watching us. Secret merit. The other day, I asked a third grade boy, what does it mean that the heavenly deities are watching us? He answered firmly saying, even if no one is watching you, the sun, the heavenly deities are watching you, so don't do anything wrong. I was very moved to hear what he had said. The term secret merit in talk in Japanese refers to the idea that performing good deeds without anyone watching accumulates positive results. From an early age, the Japanese have been aware of these spiritual elements, experiencing the individual forces that shape our lives. These cultural traditions 
continue to impact us today. There exists something in the invisible world. What does this mean? Well, still a hypothesis. I invite you to explore the world of quantum mechanics and the world view that Einstein wanted to convey. Do you recognize this family of face? You may know him. Now, let's take a microscopic perspective. It looks something like this. What the heck? These small yellow particles are atoms, which are hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and so on. This is the state that each of you currently exist in. It is not a question of this is how it is, so just accept it. Rather, you are a collection of subatomic particles like this when you shift your perspective. If you zoom in on these tiny yellow particles, it looks like this. This single particle is foggy and in motion. This simulation represents a hydrogen atom known as an electron cloud. The entire mass of this cloud is symbolized by a single yellow particle. In essence, you are composed of a collection of these fuzzy, foggy particles. Shifting your perspective is not about blind acceptance, but understanding this reality. I encourage you to embrace the challenge. This collection of yellow and pink specks make up your body. But instead of looking at these yellow and pink specks, please focus on the black color in the background that creates these tiny particles. This black background is also present inside your body. You have to have this black background in order for the yellow specks, which are elementary particles, to be created. In other words, you are right about being the physical body, right that you are the yellow specks or the elementary particles, and also right that you are the black background. And when you realize that, this black background is who you are. You will realize that the black background of the person next to you, the black background of the person you dislike, the black background of the computer or the chair are actually all identical. When you are able to view the black background as me, then you begin to have an awareness that you can perceive the people around you me, the trees, the rocks, and everything else as myself. Generally speaking, this world can be categorized into three layers, the material layer, the subatomic layer, and the zero-point field layer. Each layer possesses distinct characteristics. In the previous example, objects appear solid and stationary such as physical bodies in the material layer. The subatomic layer, on the other hand, is characterized by vibrating motion. In a way, it is as if our consciousness and thoughts shake that cloud of elementary particles. The zero-point field layer, although a hypothesis, lies beyond our imagination in the realm of infinite, known as a zero-point field. This layer on the bottom is classical mechanics, and above two layers is quantum mechanics. Now, let's explore the concept of the zero-point field. Einstein described it as whether mass is transformed to atoms, electrons, or motion, it's still a reality, a manifestation of eternal energy. I mean, indestructible energy. This oneness of creation, to my sense, is God. So, ultimately speaking, 
You exist in the material world as a physical body. You embody consciousness within the foggy realm of subatomic particles. And behind this foggy state lies a black background God. Therefore, the black background of the subatomic particles making your body, the people you love, the people you dislike, the black background of rocks and trees. They all equal within the same zero point field. This, I believe, is what Einstein meant by God. There is something within this invisible world, the zero point field. God resides within every individual, in every element, and throughout the entire universe. This is why we must remain mindful of what is right in front of us. By living our lives with the awareness that every action we take is a divine act. Countless lives have been possibly transformed through Kaika. In fact, the concept of something in the invisible world holds immense value for the Japanese people. And now it is being included into education through the realm of quantum mechanics, yielding remarkable results. Even people who have experienced life as exceptionally challenging can shine brighter than ever. Instead of thinking, I'm not worthy, we must remember that we are created from the field where God resides. By recognizing this, we can harness our full potential. I strongly believe that including these consciousness shifting techniques into education across all generations will lead to true peace on earth. Let us join together in creating a harmonious world. Thank you for listening.